As we think about the sacred shadows and all of the images of the Old Testament, so many of them involve the sacrifice of the Lord Jesus Christ. And so for just a few minutes here tonight, I want to talk to you about Jesus as the Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world. John chapter 1, we read there that John the Baptist in seeing Jesus, he pointed to him and he said, Behold the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sins of the world. If we were to ask tonight as to why Jesus left heaven and devoided himself of his nature and being equal to God and came to earth to live as a man, why did he go to the cross? and give himself as a sacrifice for our sins. I believe in summation the answer would be found in what Jesus said to Nicodemus in the very familiar passage in John 3, 16, that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. As we think about the death of anyone, especially a death so tragic, as the death of Jesus. It represents to us the gospel, which is the good news. How could any man's death be good? It is because, as Paul declared in 1 Corinthians 15, that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures. And so as we consider the Scriptures, we see many images. And we're going to focus here this evening in brief about one great image of Jesus as the Lamb. We can see that there are many, many references to the importance of His blood. In Matthew 26, if you can see the passage, in Matthew 26 and 28, Jesus said, in instituting the Lord's Supper and that which would represent His blood, this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. And such shedding of blood always been required under the law in Hebrews 9. We read in verse 22 that concerning the things under the law, they were purged with blood, and without shedding of blood is no remission. And thus Paul makes the statement that we have used as the theme of our meeting, that the law having a shadow of good things to come, but not the very image of those things, can never make the comers thereunto perfect, because it is not possible that the blood of bulls and goats should take away sin. And so it was necessary for something far greater. And so there is a theme all the way back in the beginning of Genesis carried throughout the Old Testament and we see culminated finally within Jesus Christ as this lamb that would take away the sins of the world. The prophet Isaiah, which I wish we had the time to explore more fully, there in Isaiah, the 53rd chapter, he spoke there that he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. And then the prophet noted his oppression, being afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. And in his, in his demeanor, as he was being falsely accused and unfairly judged, he is as a lamb. He is brought as a lamb to the slaughter and as a sheep dumb before his shearers, so he opened not his mouth. But one of the most intriguing and interesting of all ways that Jesus is seen as the lamb is through the type and the shadow of the Passover. If you read there in 1 Corinthians 5 and verse 7, you can see where Paul says, Purge out therefore the old leaven, that you may be a new lump, as you are unleavened, for even Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. And so we want to spend just moments now in thinking about this Passover lamb. So if you have your Old Testaments, let me encourage you to take them and turn to the 12th chapter of Exodus. As we know, some of the passages there, and the reason that I want to risk the technology is because it is easier we have a visual. As we look through what is said there concerning the Passover lamb and we lift it and in comparison show the how that it typified and foreshadowed the Lord Jesus Christ. 
The first thing I believe of significance is the fact that not just any lamb could qualify as the Passover lamb, but it had to be physically sound and unblemished. If you read with me there in verse 5 of Exodus 12, you can see where Moses commanded that your lamb shall be without blemish. A male of the first year, he shall take it out from the sheep or from the goats. He would reiterate in Leviticus 22 and 22, that blind or broken or maimed or having a winter scurvy or scab, you shall not offer these unto the Lord nor make an offering by fire of them upon the altar unto the Lord. The second thing is that there was only one lamb for each household. Each family was not permitted to take any number of lambs, but only one. One lamb per house. And that's greatly significant as we consider God's scheme and as we read His Word. In verse 3, we can see that every man a lamb. Not a multiplicity, but one. A lamb for a house. The third thing is that this lamb's body was to remain intact. It was to be unbroken. Read there in Numbers 9 and verse 12, that they shall leave none of it into the morning, nor break any bone of it. According to all the ordinances of the Passover, they shall keep it. And so as they observed the Passover and ate the lamb, they were to break the bones away from the body of the lamb, but it was to remain whole. There is a significant reason as to why. Again, the lamb was to be kept up until the evening of the day. Unlike our timekeeping where we mark the beginning of the day at midnight, the Jews, you may know, kept their time from 6 in the evening until the following day at 6 in the evening. And that constituted in their way of keeping time as a day. And so the evening hours were those hours from about 3 o'clock in the afternoon until 6 in the evening. And Moses commanded that you shall keep it unto the 14th day of the same month, which is the month Abib. And the whole assembly of the congregation shall kill it in the evening. And again, the blood acted as a mark. Because the blood was to be taken and smeared there upon the two side posts and on the upper door post. So that when the destroyer crept through the land of Egypt, it would see the blood marked upon the house and it would pass over. And thus the name of this memorial of the Passover. Because the death angel would pass over the house that was marked by the blood. And I would invite you to behold the Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world. In view one of the grandest of all shadows that we find within our, within our Bibles. Because as Jesus was unspotted, so the Lord, or excuse me, as the Lamb was unblemished physically, so Jesus was unspotted morally and spiritually. It is no accident that the Apostle Peter would say that with the precious blood of Christ as of a Lamb, without blemish, and without spot. In what sense? Who did no sin? Peter declared in 1 Peter 2, 22. Who did no sin, neither was guile found in his mouth. When there in Revelation, John viewed all that was in heaven. He wept because there was none worthy to open the scroll. But then there was one found who was worthy as a lamb slain from the foundation of the world who was without sin. It would be overfitting for any of us to die upon the cross because we have all become guilty of our sins and would be deserving of such death, but not Jesus. He was without sin. And so as that Passover lamb in Exodus 12 was unspotted, so the Lord Jesus Christ was unblemished. He made Him to be sin for us. As Brother Greg Stated in 2 Corinthians 5, 21. He had made him be sin for us who knew no sin. He became a sin offering who knew no sin. That we might be made the righteousness of God in him. As there was only one lamb. There is also only one way. There is only one lamb. I believe that there are several points of great significance as we think about the oneness. The fact that Jesus, for instance, in John 14 and 6 says that I am the way, the truth, and the life. And no man comes unto the Father but by me. I want all of our young people to have confidence in what we believe as the children of God. To know that Jesus truly is the only way, the truth, and the life. That there is no salvation in the Far East and our Middle Eastern religion. 
religion. There is no salvation in Muhammad. There is no salvation in Buddha. There is no salvation in Confucian. But Jesus is truly the only way, the truth and the life. And you can believe in him as the son of the living God who has come to give himself as a sacrifice for our sins die upon the cross that you and I might live. Our faith is greater than any faith in all the world. There truly is only one Lamb. But also more importantly, whenever we gather upon the Lord's day, we have set there upon the Lord's table a single loaf of unleavened bread that represents to us the body of the Lord Jesus Christ. And there is great significance and great importance Above what we do every Lord's Day in taking that loaf of unleavened bread that represents to us His body. And Paul declared, we being many, that is many members, we are one bread. And so there is a representation in that one undivided loaf that we take because it represents the singularity and the unity of the body of the Lord Jesus Christ. We are represented in that. And as there was only one lamb to be taken per household, there is only one single loaf taken. Whenever we observe the Lord's Supper, and we take that which represents His body. For we being many are one bread and one body, for we are all partakers of that one loaf. As the Passover lamb remained unbroken, so the body of Jesus. It is not by accident or mere incident that when they came to Jesus, that he was dead already. And they break on his legs. They went to the thief to his right to hasten his death and broke his legs to the one to the left and broke his legs. But when they came to Jesus, he was dead already. And they break not his legs. That the scripture should be fulfilled. That a bone of him shall not be broken. As the Passover lamb was kept up unto the evening hours, so the Lord Jesus Christ. Isn't it amazing how God is so specific to even some of the most minute of details that as He commanded that Passover lamb to be kept up into the evening, so when Jesus hung there on the cross, we read that there was darkness over all the land beginning at about the sixth hour unto the ninth hour. And when then the darkness was lifted at about the ninth hour, is it by accident that it was about three o'clock in the afternoon, there in the evening of the day, when all of Israel had gathered there in their houses to take their land, to observe that Passover that God had also prepared His. And there at the cross, evening of the day that sacrifice was offered. You can read that there in the 27th chapter of Matthew. But finally then as the blood of that Passover lamb acted as a mark upon the house, the only means of salvation to you and for me is through the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. I declare with great enthusiasm the fact that He shed His blood. And that because He died on the cross and shed His blood, that we have the forgiveness of our sins. There is coming a time when we do not know when the Lord Jesus Christ shall return from heaven to claim His own. And Paul declared in 2 Thessalonians 1 that in flaming fire, taking vengeance on them that know not God and obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. There is a destruction coming that is far greater than the death angel that swept through Egypt. There is the destruction of God's judgment against sin and the offense that it's caused against the righteousness of God. And Paul declared that we being now justified by His blood, we shall be saved from wrath through Him. So I would have you to consider how that they took that blood and marked it upon the upper doorpost and upon the two side posts wherein they ate. You can read that there in Exodus 12 and verse 13. I know you can't see it from where you're sitting. I can hardly see it from where I'm standing. But it says there that they took that blood and they marked it there upon the house. And they took a bunch of hyssop. 
which is a plant, and they dipped it there into the basin, and they smeared that blood there upon the two side posts and on the upper door post, so that when the destroyer came through, it would see the blood marking there the house. The same is true in regards to the blood that he shed. What does it mean when Paul so beautifully and boldly declared that he had made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him? It is because we're washed in the blood of the Lamb. John there in Revelation saw that scene and one, and one of the elders asked, Who are these that have come out? And one of the elders answered and said, What are these which are arrayed in white robes? And which came they? John responded instantly and he said, Sir, thou knowest. These are they that have come out of great tribulation and have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Isn't it wonderful to think that you and I have long robes that are white that have been washed and because of His righteousness there is a transference because of our obedience because we've been washed and made white in the blood of God. There's nothing any more grand or glorious that I can declare to you than there is salvation proven by the Lord Jesus Christ that He died so cruelly upon the cross and shed His blood and through His blood we are saved. The question is how do we appropriate that blood? In Revelation 1 and 5, Jesus Christ, who's the faithful witness, the first begotten of the dead, of the prince of kings, and him that loved us, and washed us from our sins. He washed us from our sins in his own blood. Where are we washed? Where are we washed in the blood of the Lamb? Can we all understand tonight that when Jesus died there upon the cross, when those events transpired and that Roman soldier came who broke not his legs but took that spear and thrust it in his side and when he removed it, forthwith came the wrath, blood, and water, that when Jesus died, he shed his blood. In other words, he shed his blood in his death. Understand the reason somehow, some way, we've got to to his death. Somehow, some way, we have got to come in contact with his death in order to take advantage of the blood that he shed when he died. One of the most important of all passages for men to understand in regards to salvation and the needfulness of our obedience to the gospel of Christ is found there in the 6th chapter of Romans. And Paul begins in verse 3 by saying, Do you not know that so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into into his death. You young people make mental note of this passage. Share it with your friends when they tell you that all you really need to do is open up your heart and mind and simply accept that Jesus is the Son of God and believe on Him in your heart. You can share with Him the fact that no, somehow, some way, because you don't believe your way into the death of Jesus Christ, somehow, some way, you've got to come in contact with His death. And the way that you do that is you're united with Him death by being buried with him in baptism that you might rise to walk in the newness of your life. And so when you go down into that watery grave, you are united with him into his death. You bury that old man in sin and you rise from that watery grave to walk then in the newness of life. And so the gospel, the gospel that can save your soul is very simple to understand. When you hear it, you must believe. You must believe in God and believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. You must be willing to turn from your sins, to turn away from what you have done in your past, to change your mind about how you have lived and turn to God sincerely and genuinely to make that good confession with your mouth. I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Paul wrote in Romans 10 and 10 that with the heart man believeth unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. But then you must, you must. You cannot be saved before and without. You must. Baptize in Christ for the forgiveness of your sins. Is it any mistake or small thing that the Bible says that the blood was shed for the remission of our sins and our sins are washed away in the blood of the Lamb? 
Matthew 26, 28, for this is by blood which he shed for the remission of sins. Revelation 1 and verse 5, he's washed us from our sins in his own blood. And then also concerning our obedience in baptism, it is for when the Apostle Peter on the day of Pentecost stood up in affirmation of the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ, he proved from their own scripture in the book of Psalms, therefore let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God's made that same Jesus, whom you crucified, both Lord and Christ. And when they heard this, they said, Men and brethren, what shall we do? And Peter told them to repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. Whenever Paul, who at the time was known as Saul, became the great Apostle Paul, he, in recounting his conversion, told of Ananias coming into him and saying, And now why do you tarry? Arise and be baptized and wash away your sins, calling on the name of the Lord. One of the greatest of all declarations that Jesus is the Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world. And if you today are not a Christian, if you today have never obeyed the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, that privilege and that opportunity belongs to you today, here and now, tonight.